My name is Les Thompson and I am the builder of Linnae's, the world's largest solo designed and built catamaran. This short film offers a glimpse of the story of the vessel and how she took shape. Linnae's was built of steel, measured 24 metres or 80 feet in length and weighed 70 tonnes. She was built at Inverloch in Australia at a time when there were no very large catamarans in existence from which I could draw precedent. Following a long design process, I began by erecting frames and bulkheads, welding it all together to form a network of bulkheads, decks, frames and longitudinal stringers. With this homemade forklift, I delivered, fitted and welded the heavy plates to each other and also to these bulkheads, decks, frames and stringers. When the plating was completed, I jacked the holes through 180 degrees after each had been constructed, as seen in this sequence of pictures. It was an impressive sight when they were upright. Up to that point, I hadn't really understood the size of the boat I was building. Following the positioning of the hulls, I built and fitted the wing bulkheads, thus making the vessel into a unified, rigid structure. I also constructed a sandblasting machine and blasted over 700 square metres of rusty metal to prepare it for painting with zinc silicate primer. The top coats were later applied, a massive job equivalent to completely painting approximately 15 houses. I fitted the engines and built the masts out of steel tube. They reached 20 metres or 67 feet above the upper deck. Getting Linnaeus to the sea from the urban block where she was built required a 12 kilometre journey and involved house moving contractors, electrical suppliers, police, shire and highway authorities. With help from friends and volunteers I built a railway to launch the vessel over mudflats. Linnaeus was christened and she floated for the first time straight and level and true, thus answering the questions that had nagged at me over the seven years since I began Linnae's construction. Whilst on her maiden voyage to Bairnsdale, I grappled with issues of slipping and bursting such a big boat and in the process, I designed her unique hydraulic legs. The idea was to beach Linnae's, then hydraulic rams inside the wing would push down on the legs and cause the boat to slide forwards and out of the water. I constructed the legs and the day came to try them. The feet and legs are lowered, the hydraulic rams push down and Linnaeus emerges from the water to be put on blocks and become totally accessible and safe from fouling, rusting and gales. Even quite steep slopes posed no problems. After a year of interior work, Linnaeus could be taken on a shakedown cruise to Sydney. After that cruise, I decided to lengthen the mast to provide more sail area and to enable the fitting of an additional topsail. The lengthened main mast would be 23 metres or 75 feet long, and towing it the 24 kilometres or 15 miles to the boat behind the VW was challenging. More sail area now enabled the nose to sail quite fast in favourable conditions. We next sailed on those right around the Australian mainland. On the way we swam, caught big fish and were treated to the stunning Australian coastline in the tropical north of the King George River where we sailed right up the gorge to drop anchor at the falls. We were also treated to 9 metre or 30 foot waves in more southern waters to finally pass Skull Rock and Wilson's Promontory as we approached home. I trust you enjoyed this video about Linnaeus. For those interested in further information, there is an e-book available online entitled Linnaeus, How the World's Largest Solo Designed and Built Catamaran Took Shape. Thank you for your interest.